Hello. Hey, y'all. It's me, SB. I hope y'all having a terrific Monday. Y'all know what time it is. It is 7 o'clock Eastern, and it's time for SB and Black Man Unfiltered. <laughs> y'all know. Y'all done missed us these last Dearly couple beloved. weeks. But we're here today, and we're going to have a good show. I hope everyone is doing well. I'm feeling good. Been doing a million, a million things today. I hope everyone is here and uh, will be here. We got a good show planned for tonight. I want to get everybody involved. I know y'all are excited about this. Child support, the discussion. Woo-wee. But before we get started, let me bring my man up here. Come on up here, black man. Hello, sir. Oh, no. Dearly beloved. Nothing too much. We're going to take this show on the road, right? I don't Absolutely. know what we're going to do when we're going to get on the road, though, but. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm all ready for it. You know, Security Boss, this shirt is that you have on today is banging. What you what, what you got going on? I can't tell you my secrets. I have to tell you. No, no, no. I could tell you, but I can't tell everybody. I have to tell you, after, you know. So. Oh, okay, okay. You, okay. How you doing? <laughs> how you doing, man? Man, Listen, I doing, I'm doing great, man. How, I, how are you, I, Mr. Boss? Doing good, but I, I got to tell you this before I forget. I so appreciate the boys last night. Well, Friday night. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this yeah, is good. We, I'm trying to do some different things. Security boss, trying to do some different things. I hear you. We got a tough topic tonight. Yes. You think we're going to help some people? I think we are, and I think some people are going to be mad, too, though. They're going to be mad? Yeah. You know, people get mad at everything here. Oh, Jesus. They mad because you got go. my shirt on tonight. They mad because of my shirt. Yeah, I can't. I don't stand straight. But listen, um, we're gonna say hello to a few people. Okay. I hadn't even checked my stats today. I'm on my way to a ten thousand black man. Come on. Uh, I hadn't even checked to see where I'm at. Let me see where I'm at today. Yeah, go ahead. I, get that number. I hadn't let's even see. Hold on, let me pull some up over here. Oh, let's see. Let me see some. Okay, I'm about a thousand away. Thousand. Yeah. Yeah, you gonna get there. You're busy. Yeah, I'm 12 away from 9,000 and then 1,000 away. Come on, y'all. SB right now is at 8,988. 1,012 subscribers for that 10,000 subscriber show. Let's it's going to be the bomb. Let's get it. We got to get it. But listen, me and Mr. Boss going to put the work in. We're going to do what we got to do to get it done. So look, we, we're patient. It, it'll happen. It'll happen. So when we get there, though, we're going to change some things. We're going to do some things different. We're going to welcome more and more people. We're going to also welcome black men unfiltered. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to continue on with this with this uh, thing with SB Nation, these five stars, and we're going to make it happen. But um, I don't know if we want to go around the world today or you want to just use our time to talk about this child support because I want to say hello to the people in the comment section. And I also want to set a baseline for you and me to have this conversation because, you know, we can be all over the place with this because – Right. There's a whole lot of different stories, scenarios, a whole lot going on, and we wouldn't be able to cover hardly any of it, you know, with that. But I definitely want to hear what you got to say. And I want to tell everyone and show everyone a little short video on how this came about. I mean, you know, child support has been around forever, y'all. Not forever, but a long time. But I'm talking about how it came to be that we're talking about it today. Yeah, because y'all know that ain't, that ain't really one of my things. I'm trying to get everybody married. But um, we... I got to tell y'all why I'm talking about it and tell you why it concerns me so much uh, with our men and, and kind of touch on that. But before we get started, if Mr. Yeah. Boss would go through this comment section so we could say hello to everyone. Absolutely. You want to shout anything out with uh, black men before we get no, actually no, no. started? I, I had one. I had one around the world thing for you that you probably ain't seen yet. I need. want you to do it. Let's um let's say hello to a few people and then you go ahead and do that. OK, let me fix my um, camera real quick, Mr. Boss. Why are you doing JG? That? What's going on, JG? How are you? It's good to see you. The beautiful lie. Hello, hello, hello. Sugar bump. Sugar bump, where you been? I had a show the other day. You didn't even show up. You're probably out there shopping. Dre, how you doing? It's good to see you, Mr. C. Good to see you, SV. Thank you. <laughs> Truth and Purpose. It's good to see you, Dr. Steele. Thank you so much for being here and all your support. Um, if I miss somebody, which I probably did, forgive me. Ricky. Ricky, how you doing? It's good see, to see Rick. you. Thanks, to Ed Edward. Good to see you, Edward. Liar. Thank you so much. <laughs> Ricky, we're gonna let we're gonna wet that out. So I hope you hear yourself. They are liars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you know what? It just seems to fit in so many different situations, mm. Ricky. It just seems to fit. Uh, what is Mr. Edwards saying here? He says, I'm glad someone is speaking on this topic because the politicians want men's vote, yet they aren't giving up. They're not. They're not. They're not giving up nothing. And guess what we need to talk about today? Uh, what We Know podcast. Hello, sir. How are you? What's going on, brother? JT, what's going on? Scam, dust, what's going on with you today? I hope everybody's doing well. Um, We're going to do lots in translation. How are you? Thank y'all. Thank y'all for being here on this Monday, 7 o'clock. Cars, cars. Hello. Good to see you. Jeffrey Rice. Mr. Ross, it's good to, Rice, it's good to see you. Cece, thank you. I need that, y'all. Y'all, do y'all be saying prayers for me? Mm. I'm begging y'all to do so because y'all know sometimes I be going into the lines then. Right. <laughs> I need y'all to say a prayer for me sometimes. Listen, while we're here though, um, no, I'll do that at the end. We're gonna let um if we're done right now, we're gonna let a uh, black man go ahead and do his around the world. I hope it's something good. Black man, is it good? No, ain't nothing happening good. Uh, well, so <clears throat> the other day I was on a, a platform that I was invited to to come in. Uh, give a perspective and this young man played this video for me that i hadn't seen and i don't know why i didn't see it because i'm always on top of everything but i but but i saw it and i can't unsee it um uh -oh. and hear it um the young lady on the video says very attractive young lady she says they the women today are looking for nice men including herself and her friends that were there with her they were all sitting around the table they're all dressed nice they're not you know, they're not nothing you will look at and be like, ah, oh, they're dressed nice, well-spoken women. And I'm just listening. I'm thinking they're having an intellectual conversation. However, she says, we want to be married. And we're going to look fine like this until we get married. But when I get married, um, it's just going to be an investment for me. And she said, so women, these are the instructions that I want you to follow. When you get married, the first thing you want to do is go ahead and hurry up and have a kid. After you have that kid, I want you to um, do whatever you want. Uh, eat as much as you want. Get unattractive. Make your husband become unattractive to you. Then she said, when you do all those things and he starts to get tired of you and you getting, she said, you're getting 75, 100 pounds bigger than what you were and just unattractive. She said, women, you can always shake back from this. She said, when he gets tired and you push him to a point where he wants to leave or you decide that you want to leave, she said, make sure everything's in order and then go ahead and, and leave him and get half and re life with an investment of money. You'll have an investment for the rest of your life. So basically, teaching women to play with marriage, basically. And, and, um, and, he, and so the, the guy on the platform went through the comments. And a lot of the women was like, man, you know, I never thought of that. I could have done that three years ago. I could have done that five years ago. Man, this is a good idea. Good they liars, bro. They liars. And so I thought about you when I saw the video. I was like, security boss, if you were sitting at that table, you probably would have started fighting uh, with those women sitting around that table talking like that. You know... <clears throat> I don't know what to say for women sometimes. It's like um it's like they've been created out of something that didn't have a beginning. And uh you know what I mean by that cuz like um you know my child comes from me and this generation of 20 somethings and 30 somethings they come from somewhere. You know, they come from their parents of course. Right. But the the ideas and the the methods that they use, the the things that they say are outrageous. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm thinking like, where in the world, where are they getting their information from? Or they, let's just call it their detail right. in order to perform these certain things that they are doing. And it, it came to me that they getting it from the City Girls, Cardi B, the Megs. Um, and those women are married, some of them, and they're the same age. And I'm thinking... Is, could this be possible? Are these women listening to these women mm -hmm. in order to tell them what to do? Yeah. And that brings me to something else. I was not going to talk about this. I tried not to. But, like, man, 
I know you heard about the golden shower. Yes. Like, man, are we, have we lost all our mind? I mean, again, that's what I'm saying right there. I have a feeling that the fact that this young girl put out there that she participates in this and she likes it, then other women will take that upon themselves to do to rant to anybody, but to just random people. Because what I'm finding out last Wednesday, I was on a cruise season and I'm finding out that women are participating in just oral and other things with just with me and they call women. themselves they say they in a relationship with him but if he ain't promised you for, uh, in marriage um for me it's still random and they're just doing and giving themselves to these men and doing everything so i was like pleading with them like look y'all please say something for your husband please please don't don't just do this and they were like i mean it's crazy to me all this liberation they think it's really making them attractive and 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 uh, wanted and all of that. And it is really I'm like, I'm having trouble looking at you at your face right now because I'm having these crazy thoughts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and, like, man, it's crazy. But to have a woman like young Miami come out and say, hey, me and like this, I let mine do it. I bet you anything by the end of this week, there's going to be somebody else out there doing it and reporting that they're doing it. Exactly. So these are not wives. They're normalizing it. Oh, they normalize everything. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna talk about it because that kind of that kind of brings me to my last Saturday. Um, was it last Saturday? God, it seemed like it was so long ago. No, it wasn't last Saturday. It was the Saturday before last. It brings me to my conflict resolution show. Now we're gonna play this video and we're gonna jump right into it because you know it, it's 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 bad. It's getting worse. So yeah, it, go ahead, Mister Boss. When a man leaves. You're you're in that situation by yourself. So they're already going into it with this man ain't going to stay around because men leave. That's what men do. They leave. When a man leaves, you're you're in that situation by yourself. So they're already going into it with this man ain't going to stay around because men leave. That's what men do. They leave. When a man leaves, you're you're in that situation by yourself. So they're already going into it with this man ain't going to stay around because men leave. That's what men do. They leave. All right. So shout out to Sherelle. Listen, Sherelle is just the woman with her ear to the ground. This is not her story. So don't y'all ever get mad at Sherelle. I love Sherelle. I'm so glad I have her around. Um, people like her, Sugar Bomb, uh, Q, they always keep me up to date on what's going on with these ladies. So I appreciate them so very much. Now, what, what uh, we were talking about with Sherelle was this. Um, she's telling me that women, okay, we were going back to women equality. Why do women think they're going to be equal or are women equal? We, we're looking for resolutions to this thing. So, you know, me by the end of the conversation, I'm saying, listen, let's just throw equality out the window because mm -hmm. it will never happen. Right. But what she is saying, the reasoning that women want to be equal. Now, listen to these reasons. It kind of blew me away. It was superiority and revenge. Did you hear what I said? I did. Superiority and revenge. I'm thinking, okay, that don't sound right. That don't sound right. What you talking about? So in her explaining, she this was a this little snippet out of it. She was saying that a lot of single mothers have come to the conclusion. She said it right there. Going, they go into it knowing that this man is going to leave because that's what men do. And she said, when she said it, me and Hink was like, huh? You know, shocked, you know, gasping because it was like, what? She said, what what's happened is single women or women, period. They have lived one day, have survived one day without these men. And that's the worst thing that could happen to them is that they survive that one day. So once they do that, they realize and they tell themselves they're not, um, they don't need the man because what men do is they leave. Okay. Have your state of mind or your crazy mindset. Of course, I'm like, no, that is incorrect. I hate that women have adapted that for their truth because it's not true. It's selfish. It's, 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 it's awful because you're not even giving the child a chance to have a balance. You know, you've already said he out of here. I'm going down there to that child support office. You hear what I'm saying? I'm, now I'm revenging. This is where the revenge part comes in. This is, this is where I was like, cause you know, they're getting the benefits. Because they can't do it by themselves. Right. So 
not only do they care about how this child is going to behave, how does, you know, I can understand them not staying together in a relationship, but that child needs a father and they need a mother. So here we go. The revenge part was I kept hearing, oh, he ain't going to be here anyway. I'm going into this with the, I'm going in. Now, what does that mean? Black man, I'm going in with the thought that he ain't going to be here. Premeditated failure. Not only that is, am I doing this to get all the benefits? Exactly. She said they go in thinking or thinking that this man is going to leave because that's what they do. So since um, I'm the person and, and y'all can correct me if you like, I always say that I advocate for men. Now, my advocation does not look like pandering in any way. I don't pander. I happen to think if a man has the correct information, he'll move accordingly. Mm -hmm. He will move accordingly. So I'm always willing to give the right information. I'm not getting ready to cover up nothing. If, if a woman has told you, y'all hearing these women out here, you hearing them say, it's a, you hearing them say, well, men leave anyway. <laughs> you know, that's what y'all do. And you still persist on not protecting yourself. Then this may be what you get. So that brings us to this child support situation, black man. And, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. But that's what stirred it up in me because the revenge part to be equal. Now, if I don't need you to help you raise this child, now I'm being equal to you. But then I'm also seeking for re revenge because you didn't stay. So now I'm going to go to get all the benefits I could possibly get. I'm not even going to check in with you because you left. So what are we going to do, black man? How are we going to fix it? Is this going to be the story? Because we already know. Um, 30% of DNA paternity tests nationwide turned out negative. So that means that most of the men, not most, 30% of the men that are paying child support, their tests were negative. Revenge? So that means that means 30% of them were wrong. They shouldn't have, they were not the daddy. So what now? 30%, 30%. Of the DNA paternity test nationwide turned out negative. So that means that um, who did this report? The American, the American uh, Association of Blood Banks, Blood Banks, mm -hmm, which accredits DNA testing labs, released its finding about paternity testing um, in a landmark 1999 report, stating that of the people who came and offered their DNA, 30 percent of those tests came back nationwide negative. So that also means that means that a lot of these women don't even know who the daddy is. Right? So, yep. so now y'all got to help me out. Black man, we going we got to, we got to find our way through this because we already know, I, I've said this before, and y'all can help me out with this. You can argue with me, black man, but let's, let's do the basis of this. The basis of child support is uh, supposed to be an accountability system, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't agree with that. I think that child support is just jacked up. It is. <laughs> okay. Let's, that's, that's the basis. <laughs> right. Our basis for child support system is jacked up, but this. I also don't see accountability is me making you do something. Right. I don't agree with that. I think that's consequences. Right. I know a lot of men and women think that once um, somebody makes them do something or, you know, like pay child support, make them do whatever they, whatever, go to jail, whatever. They feel as though that they are being accountable. I don't think so. I think accountability is when I clearly say I did this and I have, reflected on everything I did. So I will not do it again. That's accountability. That's true accountability to me. But I know others think differently because again, it's supposed to be an accountability system. That's a consequence system and they're going to use you until they can't use you no more. They will drag you. They will take everything you got. Right. And then what? What? So is that a good baseline, black man, that I don't fear, I don't, I, I'm not... <sighs> What do you think about that being accountable? What do you think about the child support system being accountable? Would you call it accountability system? Oh, I, I agree with you. Um, it's not accountability. It's forcing someone to do something. 
but we have to look at it from two different spectrums. Women are going to do it for revenge. The the state are going to happily help you do it because they make money off of it as well. Um, I always keep in mind the number that blew my mind in Georgia. Uh, they made almost three billion dollars uh, on um, in a two year period. It made almost two billion dollars on child support fees. Um, and so the state is making money. They're making money every time a dad gets a check or pays his child support. They get paid. And so my thing is this: if you take the child, if you take the fee away, the government will not even even worry about child support. If if there's a law passed that say the states no longer going to get paid, they're not going to care uh, anymore. Uh, they yeah. they base, they want their money. You know what? Um, let's also say this, that child supports differ from county to county and from state to state, Absolutely. because I think where I'm at, um, I don't think there's a fee for child support. I think whatever the father pays or the mother pays, it goes straight to the mother or father. Don't have a um, processing fee? Um, now, they told the me, to the mama? well, they told me I could charge a processing fee to the father for deducting. Right. Right. I could, but right. that would be money coming to my company. It wouldn't be going to the state or anyone else. Right. Now, I don't, you know, that, of course, that's not the issue for everybody, obviously. But for where I'm at, I don't know of there being a process and fear outside the one that the employer can charge. We right. can. Um, but I never have. I've never done that before. Um But the other um baseline, oh, yeah, the baseline that we set was that it differs. So you have, you people please remember check your child support you know laws in your state accounting because it does mm -hmm. vary and some of them are oh awful where right. is it where i'm at um i know the child support enforcement people will work with you you can actually set up a payment program you know it's a little different but you know i'm just saying it is not like that everywhere uh, so. yeah i think that um for men men don't have a choice in any of this they don't have a say. Okay, let's uh, talk about it. What do you mean? Uh, a woman can go get pregnant and decide that she doesn't want the baby and, and go delete that child. If a man says, I'm not ready to be a father, she can say, I don't care what you feel. Uh, baby's still coming and you're going to pay. At that moment, she has complete control. Um, and when the baby gets here, she will make you pay. And that baby's going to get her everything she needs beneficial wise as far as housing, um, we were talking about this yesterday on another platform, housing, uh, $45 a month for a four bedroom house with wooden floors. Now, you know, when you, back in the day, you used to think about housing as a raggedy house or in the projects, gunshots everywhere. No, 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 no. Here in Dallas, I'm going to do a video on it. I'm going to actually go there and tour the place so you guys can see it. Beautiful homes, wood floors, comes with Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi, washer, dryer. TV on every wall in every room. Oh, just beautiful homes. Uh, and these women are eligible to get them if they have children, if the father's on child support, if they're getting government assistance, this will be a part of Section 8 program. So, Well, let's talk about that. But let's go back, Black Man, because I don't totally agree with you about something. Okay. Um, And it goes back to how a baby is actually created. Mm -hmm. Um. We say things very loosely sometimes because we don't know what it entails or, or how it affects or any part of that. Now, understand, it all depends on what the question is that we're asking. If you say to me, who is the most um, uh, undisciplined or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what I'm trying to say, like, who was wrong as in having a baby, per se. Right. I would say to you that a woman does have 32, 33, 36 different ways of contraception to not to get pregnant, mm -hmm. right? So she was, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, what's the word? She was undisciplined, right. right? But I am not letting the young man off the hook because she got 32 ways. If that young man, whomever, young man, old man, married mm -hmm. man, whatever the situation is, if he has not made up in his mind that he is ready to be a father, he got to protect himself, black man. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. care what she got. But again, mm -hmm. it it's, it's all depends on what the question is. If we saying that she was the most um, undisciplined or irresponsible, she get the award all day, every day, because she had all these different ways to prevent having a baby. But 
on the flip side, if we're talking about child support, I'm mm -hmm. looking at that young man and saying, sir, did you not know child support existed? Because mm -hmm. where were you at when everyone was having these conversations about what happens when a woman gets pregnant with a baby that she don't want, well, that she may want and what you don't want? Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to figure out what question we're asking. If we're talking about child support, I'm going to say, men, y'all got to stay away from, never have a baby, never have sex. See, this is where it gets hard. Don't have sex with somebody you're not willing to have a baby with. Right. I'm I'm not agreeing with that. I'm I'm not agreeing with the nature thing. I'm not agreeing with the norm. I'm not I'm not I'm not letting these kings, these men who are in power, off the hook because they want to have sex. And that, because and we that, got women out here that are uh, created differently. You know, yeah. some people call them, you know, make fun of them and stuff, but they create it differently. They don't, they think differently. Yeah. So me knowing that they think differently, why would I give them the most important thing that I have? And I'm not a man, but why would, why would young men give them the most important thing that they have with the knowledge of, or with the understanding, oh, she don't want no baby. She got 32 different ways to prevent it. So in other words, this young man is putting his whole life. In, in this hand. woman's hands. Yep. And then once they accomplish what sex accomplishes, because mm -hmm. it's there for procreation. Right. Once we accomplish it, he wants her to abort. Can I say that? No. Delete there you go. a child. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, nobody knows what that is entailed. You know, I don't think nobody comes out. Well, they probably do. I'm sure you can read books about it. But, you know, it may be something that sounds simple and easy and maybe women make it look simple and easy. But is it really? No. So how can we so this easily just say, OK, this was needs to happen. Right. Um, I think this and this is what I've been preaching for the last month. Um, I think men need to get to a point where we have so much self-control, we can say no to a female. Um, no. Uh, when it comes to the whole sex thing, same thing. I, I'll, I'll say that to young men too. Uh, if I talk to young men, it's the same same conversation. Um, and I said something that pissed a lot of people off on my TikTok last the other week mm. uh, when I gave four reasons. Um, <laughs> I gave four reasons. Um, you know, things that men can do to 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 heal the community and be leaders. And I think men are not being leaders. And I think being a leader, being part of being a leader, is having sexual discipline. And, uh, and have young boys look up to you and say, okay, if black man can wait or he's, he did not having sex or if, if this guy can wait, and then I can wait too. And have that conversation with these young men and hey, listen, you don't have to go and get, you have sex with these women and get them pregnant because you can have 30 minutes of fun. It would a lifetime. It'd be a lifetime of nightmare if you've gotten the wrong woman pregnant. But those, but those four things, uh, that that I mentioned is that don't have sex, don't be in a relationship with a single mom, and, and, and this time, not the old times, because back in the day, those single moms appreciated those dads. Like Shaq got had a stepdad; his mom appreciated him. He was a king. He came in and married her and nurtured that house. I mean, he just took care of things. I'm talking this day and time. Don't be with a single woman at all, and the reason for that is unless she can show that she's been through therapy. And she's working on herself and trying to get herself together. Leave her alone. She has a bad mouth. She'll cuss you out in front of your mama, your grandma, your cousins, your pastor, um, the, the 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 cashier at Target. If she'll do that, don't talk to her. If she's come from a single parent home, make sure she's gone through some type of therapy to, to feel that void, to try to heal that void of not her, her not having her father or her not having her mom. Um it's Black just, man, what about just a simple um okay, let me say this. You could have a sex, have sex, a man and a woman can have sex, and everybody could have done something right. It, everybody could have done everything right. Mm -hmm. He could have had the condom, she could have had the um the birth control, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. and it's still a baby could have come out of it. Yeah. Because nothing's a hundred percent unless don't you just do don't it. do it. Don't do it. So let's so let's just say these were good people. Let's just say it was good on both sides. She wouldn't, she wouldn't trying to get the revenge on him and he wouldn't try, you know, he wasn't trying to leave right. nothing behind, but 
it happened. We're yeah. here now. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't plan it and he don't want it. What do we do? What do we do? This is a, this is a real thing because, you know, we, we're putting out there that there's ways to prevent it. And it is, I mean, you know, we do the best that we can, but once you're indulging in procreation and you're doing what you were supposed to do, because it is purposeful, mm -hmm. you know, when you get together, that's what you're supposed to do. Things happen. Right. I, I mean, you know, I even heard they crawl, they crawl up your leg. You know what I'm saying? You don't, right. I don't know. You know what I mean? So you're doing everything right and it still can happen. So if that's the case, what do you do? Hold your thought though, because let's go through these super chats really quick. Mm -hmm. Big Bear Bull, how you doing? Thank you so much for your $10 super chat. He says, hey, SB, um, hey, hey, SBU and Black Man Unfiltered, uh, motherly, nurturing, grown man. <laughs> so. yeah, last night we, that was from last night. What's up, uh, Big Bear Bull, man? Love you, brother. Love you, man. <laughs> that's that's an inside joke from last night. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, BBB, for your ten dollars super chat. But, but, black man, I'm I'm serious because we have an epidemic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we got another one. Okay, we got a we got a problem though. We have problems here, and we got to figure out how we can fix this because what we're doing is we're continuously raising these kids. Mm -hmm. um, that we are saying that are not good for us. They're not being productive. They're becoming out criminals. Uh, they're not being able to learn men and women. I'm not just talking about boy kids. I'm talking about female children too. Right. And we have, this is what's happening to our community. Nobody really cares about what happens to us. And just, just in case y'all didn't know, right. but Dre, how you doing? He says, um, thank you so much Dre, for your five dollars super chat. He says the way of a transgressor is hard. When we go out of God's way, chaos and shoes, you're right. That's right, BMU, self-control of the second hit. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. Thank you, brother. But but I, I still think that we're in a spot right now, black man, where most um where I hear a lot of still blaming the woman. Now they've already said they want to be equal. And they want to get for revenge. I don't understand the revenge part. I don't know what happened, when it happened. I don't get it. Well, um, I think that I, I agree with um, the Sosa in the, in the chat. Okay, I do think I, I, she said mandatory vasectomies. I do think we should do that. I think every man that wants to be sexually active and wants to go out there and, and have sex and don't have no self-control, then he should have a vasectomy. Um and then when you have a vasectomy, you can't get trapped in that then. You can't get trapped in that situation. I'm talking about for the men that are undisciplined, that, can, that you can't tell nothing to. They're going to go out, just do what they want to do, and be a part of the problem. I'm talking about those men. Um, because we want to, we want leaders out here that are leading men that say, you know what? You can wait. And, this is, and these are the alternative of things that you can do if you, you have to wait. Right? And if you wait, this is the goal at the end of it. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. This is what you're stuck. Just imagine being with it, women and men. Just imagine being with a woman that has not been promiscuous. Imagine being with a man that hasn't been promiscuous. Yeah, and y'all build your own family. And you can, if you want to have sex, you have that wife next to you that you can have sex with for the rest of your life, and vice versa. But but the, for the men to have no control, yeah, get those vasectomies because you because you're gonna keep becoming a part of the problem. They're gonna still be walking around here with big old stomachs, and you're gonna be denying that you're the father. Maybe you're the father, maybe you're not, because women are highly promiscuous. But 30%, if, right? Yeah, 30%, right? And so you, you don't know if you're the dad, you, you know. So not only do we do mandatory vasectomies, but also do mandatory DNA tests now when the baby come out. They liars, bro. They liars. Exactly. So go ahead and get go ahead and have a mandatory um DNA test as well. And you know what, security boss, if you dig a little deeper in that in that um in that blood bank uh thing that they did, mm -hmm. and that 30%, yes. do you know in that 30%, 18% of those women are married? Well, I was gonna talk about that because um what I was getting ready to say is back in the 60s and the 70s, um, it was quite I don't want to use the new word normal, but it wasn't a surprise for uh men to have bastard babies. But there right. was no child support. Right. You know, they, they could have a whole nother family on the other side of the, you know, and the woman was different. She was just going to take care of it and live off the system. She was, but there was no child support. Exactly. So now I don't know if the child support system has said, we're not doing this anymore. It's mm -hmm. time for 
these men, but we're relying on the women to do it. And that's right. where the problem is coming in at. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I agree with the, I mean, then listen, the, this voluntary uh, visectomies, that would be if a man has said that he doesn't want to have any kids. Now, do you think a lot of these men would actually say they don't want kids? Um, well, the client, okay, so like the women have their ear to the street, but the men do too. Uh, there's this, what's happening right now, what I'm hearing is a lot of men saying, what is, what is my, and you try to explain these things to them, security boss, because that's why we have these shows. But a lot of men out there, especially on huger panels now, uh, they're asking, what's the purpose of being, if you're looking at the world the way it is right now, and you look in the black community and, and divorce is up 73%. We looked last night, we talked about this last night. Divorce is up 73% in the black community. And we're looking at these divorces happening and they're being, and 90% and of those divorces are being filed by women. And then, me, and then men that have substantial amount of money or things, they're splitting half of everything with those women that, who are filing for divorce. These men are asking the question, wait, wait, what's the benefit in marriage if, if it goes wrong? Even if I'm right, she can leave at any time and just completely ob uh, obliterate our family, our, our general family, our nuclear family, um, the household. Just break it apart whenever she feels like it because it's set up for her to do that. You're, you're right. But, you know, you know how I am about marriage. See, in marriage, exactly. I just think I think we put everything in one pot. And yeah. if we lose, we both lose. Exactly. So I don't know if I agree with <laughs> You know, I get that women file for divorce much quicker or more so than men. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that I don't know if I agree with the findings of that, because I know some men right now who got two wives. Well, I should say never divorced their first wife, but living with a woman 15 years. And right. it's OK. You get what I'm saying? All right, right. So that particular woman didn't go down. And uh, these particular women, uh, you know, a while back, it was like, look, I am not going to divorce my man, my husband, my first husband, whether I'm with him or not because of checks and things of that nature. Right. right. So in the man, he's with a whole nother woman and won't marry her, but won't divorce the first one. Right. So I don't I don't know about that, but I get the, what we're saying. You know, right, right. I get what and, we're saying. And the reason for, for me saying that is because last night I, we, we, I, let's just, I was like, let's just break this down because. Even in, in the age groups. So somebody asked about age. Thank God for that. So the age groups of those divorces are younger. Young, twenty. They said between 25 and 43. So if I can believe at, that. 25 and 43 are filing the most divorces, right? Absolutely. I can believe that. you do, Because we're talking about the woman that thinks, that may think he's not going to stay. He's, exactly. That, that's the woman we're talking about. I can agree with that all day, every day. Right. I can agree with that. And this, and, and that's like, we, in my mind, I'm I'm discussing intuition. You know, women don't have an intuition. Women just have this thought in their mind that, like, a, and some women, not all, I'm not going to broad stroke any women t today, but w if some women can wake up out of a dream and act on what she dreamed about, <laughs> you know, oh, you, you know, or, or get a mindset of he going to leave me. He going to cheat on me. He's yeah. going to be with another woman. Yeah. And, and and she'll start behaving in that manner. She'll start putting a little money to the side. She's preparing herself to be broken. Right. right? So and so what do we do about that though, black man? If, if that indeed is the reasoning for a lot of the divorces, if that's actually true, I know women do that now. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I know they do that because women are emotional. Right. But if that is exactly what's going on, I would say that we need to teach people how to be married and yes. teach people how to in the vetting process, actually mm -hmm. teaches them the questions to ask and what to overturn before you even bother to get married. Because right. I'm realizing now that people are not asking right questions. And, and even with you security boss, you know, I sit back and watch cause I'm, I, uh, you're a case study for me. I just okay. sit back and watch you and Mr. Boss work. And even when you're on different panels, I'm watching, I'm just watching, sitting, just watching. I'm not in it. I'm not typing nothing. I'm just watching. And to see you in, in the lion's den, is what you call it, with these women, uh, the night that really just rubbed me the wrong way is the night you were talking about marriage and you said, put everything in one pot and be married. And I need to be ready and available for my husband. And the, and the, I'll never forget the, the, the response to you was, is that what you do in your marriage? And you said, yes, that's what I do in my marriage. 
Why I don't leave? I ain't out when, baby. I'm not living my life for no marriage. I'm not living my life. For no and I'm and I'm sitting back just, and I look over at my wife and say, "Babe, you heard that?" I, she said, "I'm not living for marriage. I'm not living for no man and no marriage. So what's the point? What 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 is your purpose as a woman if you are not able to be ready and available for your for your husband? Just like." Last night they asked the question: Do can you nurture? Can a does can a woman nurture a man without sex? Yes, she encourages him, she motivates him, she's there for him. Some of the stories you told, security boss, inspires me, him, inspires motivate. Him. I mean, come on. And a lot of the people in the chat were saying, "No, that's women. That's what women do for children. That ain't what women do for men." And I'm like, Lord have mercy. So this is where we are now. So you mean to tell me that a man has to walk around and be a machine? all of his life and not be able to go into his wife and sit down and have a moment with his wife of vulnerability where he can just talk to his wife and she can be there for him like that. I, I just, I'm, it's, it's crazy. Security ball. Black man. Look, uh, sugar phone, sugar phone say SB, they lying. These women are about getting alimony, <laughs> alimony <laughs> or oh. child support like that. It's a lie. They liars, bro. They She's liars. saying that this is what they're about. Yes. This is this is how it is. And okay, black men, we if we if we know this, and most of the time they tell on themselves way before mm -hmm. the hand in marriage. Really? Why are we not why are we not paying attention? Why are we impregnating these women? What are we <laughs> doing? Our men, our good men are being dragged. And let me tell you something. I saw a court case, a mm -hmm. child support case from Texas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know some things I don't know, but I'm gonna fill in my own blanks. Mm -hmm. The child support case, the young lady was a young woman and the man looked like he was older, but he was older and married and had eight kids. My Lord. OK. They said that they had agreed upon an amount outside of court, but for whatever reason, um, it they ended up in court. So I'm assuming he did not follow through with whatever he was said. Now, I'm thinking it might have been like two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars or something. Somewhere between two hundred and five hundred. Right. right. For his one child with this young lady. Mm hmm. They got up in the courtroom. They had all his check stubs. His check stubs say he made $145,000 last year. So the judge calculated and added everything up. But understand this. His first question to the young lady was, um, your child is now three years old. Would you like to have back child support? She said no, because he said he can't afford it. Right. Uh -huh. Follow me. Uh -huh. follow so once she found out that. He was going to have to pay her $1,492 per month for her one child. She said, um, I'm just thinking, can I change my mind about that back child support? Because I, I think that I, I want it now. And she kept on talking to the point that she played herself and that judge threw it out completely. But did you just hear what happened? So, Listen, black man, the, the, the father of the child had established a payment plan that he was going to give this young girl. He was a married man. He had two other kids in child support. He was married, making good money or whatever. He, I don't know how he convinced this girl of how much money he was making, but they had established some amount. I'm saying somewhere between two and $500. I don't know. But when she sit up in there and that judge told her, oh, you get $1,492. That's what he's going to be scheduled to pay. Boy, you, uh, she starts smiling, start getting this look on her face. And this man, <laughs> he, you know, you, he didn't show his face. He just showed his avatar. But I could imagine he was sick. But she just kept talking and kept talking. And she had already broken one of the rules of child support by taking the child out right. of the, I guess, the the county that that they were in right. and so the judge threw it out but i'm saying to myself why didn't you just pay the 200 dollars? because all she got to do now is go to where she lives now and establish another child support order and it's going to be the 1400 dollars again and still we back here again 1400 dollars, black man with eight kids you got eight kids and one of them you're gonna get 1400 dollars. what this man gonna live off of no, they, they don't care and uh, Mr. Boss, uh, pull up what I just put in the chat. This is the problem. This is the problem. Um, as soon as he pulls it up, this is what men have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> as yeah, yeah. matters. What's no, that? Yeah, uh, it's called. It's called. Oh, you done gave it another name uh, now, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's called osclamatus. 
Oscar I mean, Mottas. Word up, guys. You write this down. Oscar Mottas is what men have. And what I what I did what I took two, three words together that that, uh-huh. that that men do as clouds the mind. It does. <laughs> and so as <Oscar>, clouds. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying not to laugh. Ask about it. It's something that clouds the man's mind. And so when a man has sex with a woman and she throw that thing on him because she's well experienced, he ain't thinking about the red flags. He's not seeing no flags. All he's seeing is booty. All he's seeing is the way she has oral sex, the way she throw it back on him, the way she cook in the house, you know, the stuff that she shows him that she ain't going to give him but six months until she get that ring and that. And then she said, Oh, this cabbage is going to be good to, you know, so. Uh, you need to see those. You need to see those red flags early. I mean, so what do we do though, black man? Okay, so we understand. We understand the makeup of a man. Mm-hmm. We understand it. And we always we already understand too that I don't think the child support system is going anywhere. We got to understand mm-hmm. why it was established. Mm-hmm. I I can believe that these United States was established by some old traditional patriarchy white men. Would you agree? Yes. And and they believe in um legacy you know they believe in that they believe in a, a, a nuclear family the uni- united states is built on nuclear families that's what it was built on back then back then right and that was their intentions they mm-hmm. they didn't intend for bastard babies no they put the system in place that I mean the welfare system and things of that nature because there had been so many men lost at war deleted so we needed to take care of the women and children that were already here they had no intentions that this thing was going to fall apart the way that it did. Now, I'm going to be totally honest. Because I think that people of our culture move a certain way, there may be some uh, systemic racism within this system because they knew how we were going to respond. Does that make sense? Exactly. So when are we going to we gonna wake up? Wake up. We're we gonna wake up. Listen, they already know as soon as I tell the black man that he gotta do something, he's gonna go to the left. They already know. Right. So he, he go to the left. Yep. As soon as I put this parameter out here, so I don't think initially that it was even money and fees was involved. I think it was just the support of the child for the child. As mm-hmm. it came about, they realized that they can make money. They can right. make money. And guess what? Now they're adding to it. Now they're take now do you realize if you over ten thousand dollars, it is a felony in mm-hmm. some states. No license, no job. You can't do it's it. It's a felony, right. black man. You right. it's a felony because you can't pay a bill, you can't pay for your a felony. Mm-hmm. That means if you got a felony, that means any if that's on your you go just go to a good job and let them pull up your background check and it says felony and see what see how far you get. So so what now? What does that leave you? Can't get a good job. You owe over ten thousand dollars in child support. Now what? All right. Um, yeah, I think it because back in the day, me and my grandmother said back in the day there was no child support system set up. No. She said back in the day, if a woman left or wanted to leave, it was done in quiet because people would shame you for it. Right. And she said the children would stay with the dad. That was it. Right, oh, she I, said there I don't were no women. That. Yeah, she said the, the the children would have to stay with daddy. Um, and I and I was like, okay, well, especially in Georgia, that was a law in Georgia. You get a divorce, you want to leave your man, the kids automatically stay with the daddy. I mean, I, I don't see anything wrong with it if that's the case. But I remember I'm from the south, and you are too. But I don't remember women leaving. I don't remember houses. I don't remember people no, breaking no. up. I don't care what the situation was. Exactly. You could have six kids over here by this other woman. Exactly. And that other woman was on the system getting welfare, food stamps or whatever it was to take care of her six because she knew that that man was married and he wasn't going to come over there and be the daddy to her kids, even though he was the daddy to her kids. Exactly. So she had six bastard babies yeah. for what I can't even imagine. I mean, but you know what? She probably knew along the way, the more kids I have, the more money I'm gonna make. But there even even in the 60s and the 70s, there were homes that received benefits and the father was there. It just wasn't enough money. So that's what those benefits was for. And you but know what now, changed? You know what changed? Those benefits that you're just talking about. I'm glad you said that, security boss. Those benefits back then, a man could be in the house in some cases. Yes. She would be there and she still would get those benefits. Yes. Now if a woman goes into, uh, if she say for instance, her and her baby daddy, or her and her husband, or fiance, whatever he is to her, 
they're on great terms. There's no problems. But she just need a little assistance for a little time until they get back on their feet. The first thing they're going to say when you go in there to sit down, ma'am, we must put your father's, your children's father on child support. That's mandatory. Well, I do know that. I do know if they're receiving any kind of benefit, the child's exactly. father has to be, somebody got to pay for it. Exactly. So you're, you're exactly right. But um, here in my state or county, I do know that uh, you can be married and still get, receive assistance, especially housing assistance. Maybe not right. uh, food stamps or, you know, a check or whatever they call it now, but you can definitely receive housing. You can. Um the Sosa says at Security Boss, is cheating a valid reason to file for a divorce? Um, it all depends. Um, I've been married for a very long time. If Mr. Boss decided he wanted to get flirty, then I would, for me, it would be a no because I've been married so long. But going into a marriage, if you, if your husband is doing this or if the wife is doing this, it could be something that um, is not tolerated. Uh, but I think you should be married forever. See me, I, I, I wear people out with being into your wife so much or to your husband so much. You ain't got time for that. But, you know, you have to really examine this. If a person has time for cheating, there's something else going wrong. You know, the ball is being dropped in other places also, because I think cheating is so calculated. You know, you got to plan a time. You got to change the name in your phone. You got to set it up. It's just so much more to it. And that, that marriage or that, um, that marriage has some other issues or some other foundational cracks that need to be dealt with. But anybody can come back from it. I right. mean, I and, think. Right. And in many cases, security boss, back in the day, you did have to plan and be very strategic on how you were going to cheat. Mm -hmm. But today you don't because watch this. There's a lot of people in the workplace and a lot of, and I've been at jobs, security boss, uh, over my tenure of working in corporate America. Uh, there's people that go on break on their hour lunch break and do quickies and come right back to work. You said that, but isn't that still kind of calculated? I mean, yeah, they'll message each other, but I'm saying that she don't have to worry about the husband looking for her. Where's my wife? Oh, she at work. She worked eight to five. I got you. You know what I'm saying? So he, now there's no curiosity. She ain't got to come in late. She, the hours ain't awkward. Her schedule is still the same. She goes to work, get to work at eight, leave at five, but on her lunch break, she throwing them, she opening them thighs and, mm. and, and then go, go in there, get herself together, get back to work, go back home. Husband don't know nothing. Listen, uh, AL said, thank you so much, AL. And how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. He says, uh, we should all just leave each other alone. No more kids. Let's reset the human race and skip a generation or two. Well, you know what, AL, you say that and you're probably laughing and kind of thinking like, you know, mm -hmm, but you know, they are dying off. Uh, you do know that mm -hmm. <laughs> we are dying off. We are. So um, one thing that I want women to understand is that we all women as women, we need to have covering there. I hate to say this, but there are, there's an attack on women. I don't want to say it that way. Cause I don't want the women thinking that black men are attacking them. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we have this this just this, this war thing going on and it ain't got nothing to do per se with a black man but a woman can i've seen so many stories recently where women have been on subways and uh a woman in Lowe's the other day and this ain't got nothing to do with black man it could be a man period a man white man black man asian man it has not i'm not gonna let y'all gang up on a black man that's not what i'm doing but women that are not covered are very vulnerable it was a woman in Lowe's working, had her Lowe's little red vest on, was being kidnapped from the store by a man. Being kidnapped. Taken away, got all on camera. She just screaming and hollering. Do you know this man? No. You ever heard this man? No. He kidnapping her. It was a story I saw on TikTok, TikTok, black man, a woman on the subway. This black man came in there and he used her for a punching bag. I mean, he just went out. I mean, you know, they're off. You know what I'm saying? They're not, they don't have. But my point is, if this woman that was in Lowe's, if she could possibly have been married, she might not have been in Lowe's. I don't know if she was or not, but she might not have been working at that time. Or the woman on the subway, if she had a husband, she might not have been on the subway by herself at that time. I don't know. I'm just saying the situations might have been different and these women might have been OK if they were covered. I'm looking at these women and I'm thinking these women are not covered. They're, They're not. not, you know, and I'm saying to ladies. I know our mentalities have changed. We've gone. I mean, this revenge thing is kind of scary to me because I'm thinking, how are you going to revenge something? All you can't, all you got as a woman to revenge against a man is your box. So what are you planning on doing? You know, you can't beat them. You can't fight them. Well, who, you know? 
Hold on a second. Oh, Lord. They trying to fight? No, no, no. I want you and Mr. Boss. Next time we do a show, let's go ahead and have these receipts for everybody. I'm just going to, I'm just going to lay the, I'm just going to plant the seeds. The, there's a new study that just came out. I think CDC or how, arrest or something. It came from somewhere. FBI. I think it's FBI. FBI. Yeah, I think it was FBI. That says that in 2021 and beginning of 2022, more women were arrested for domestic violence cases against men than men were arrested for domestic. It's flipped. It's flipped because the last 20 years has been men, women. Now, more women in the last year and a half have been arrested for domestic violence against men. They're beating men up. They're fighting them. They're stabbing, shooting at them. No, no, say it right. They're stabbing and shooting. They're not yeah. fighting. They yeah. might start out that way, but they they revenging. It's different. It's a different yeah. thing. These Listen, a year ago, I told I was fighting for women. I'm still fighting for women because I don't believe all women are this way. So I'm right. still fighting for women. Right. But I will tell you now that women are they, they their mindsets are out of control. There are mm -hmm. some women out here that they they can't even think straight and they don't see what they're doing. They are totally blinded. They're acting so far out of character, but they don't recognize that they're acting out of care. I'm like, but you have a child, you have kids, you're able to give birth. So, so there's something in you that's not right right now. Right. And they just can't see it. But let's read this. Clement Gray, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. He says, read Genesis 3.16. One word is there. Look at the definition and then you will we'll see whether it is revenge or not. May find out women unwilling to follow God. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Mm. Let that soak in. Uh, <laughs> security boss, that, um, I did a TikTok. I don't know if you saw it. I did a TikTok of this young lady. Um, this young lady and her boyfriend broke up. She told him to get out of the house. He got out. She, I guess he took something out of the house that she wanted to keep. She went over to his dad's house. She put herself on IG Live. Why? Went over to the dad's house, had a knife in her hand, put the knife to the daddy's throat and said, call your son and tell him I want all my stuff he took out the house. She He gets his son on the phone. She tells the son on speakerphone, you about to get here and you about to be here in the next 30 minutes or I'm just going to start stabbing your daddy. Mm. The, the son rushes over to the house. He runs into the house. He tries to disarm her, but slips or something. And she ended up turning the camera around and she has her hand around his throat, the knife to his throat. And she said, look at the camera and speak to everybody. Oh my God. And she has the knife to his throat like this here. I mean, when I tell you this woman is, she got the eyelashes, the, the, the weave hanging off her head. She look a damn fool. And she's in this house, literally trying to cut this man daddy up. Mm. And Black man, we gotta. She's trying to cut him up. We gotta fix it. But let's yeah, read this yeah, super we chat. Got, we have to. We have a solution. We got to come up with some solutions here. Let's read this. Al, thank you so much for your super chat. He says the real problem is that mothers get automatic custody. Custody. Um, men shouldn't have to go to court to get custody. Default fifty fifty custody solves most of this. Let me tell you this. Um, when I was looking at that that um, that you call it like child support trial the other day. It was something that the judge said that I really, really liked. He said to the young lady that if you move, so he ended up throwing it out. Let's understand that. He told her if he took, if she took that child to another location or to another county or state, that she the only way she could do that would be to get permission from the dad. Now she he the the, the judge told her, now I can't make him come to see the child, but he has the right to have um visitations. Excuse me. He has the right to have visitations with this child. And if you take this child out of the out of the county, out of the state or whatever, without his permission, then there's a problem. We're going to be back here in court. Did you know that? This was in Texas, too. You cannot. These, these mothers cannot take these um, babies away from the dad without the dad's OK. Exactly. But of course, I know it happens. But the, see, again, dads, we got to get back on and get them women back in court and let them know that they've taken our babies away and try to get your own kid. Exactly. I didn't know that. I thought the mom pr pretty much had free reign to do what she wanted to do. I'm all, I'm all for it. Dads, I'm, I'm all for it. Dads, if if you have the means of taking care of your children um, and you could full, full time take care of your babies, go get your kids. I'm an advocate for it. I'm around so, men that have done it. I've done it. You've done it. Yeah. Children. It, um, it might be hard at first, but yes. you have to adjust. I mean, guess what? You do what you got to do. But listen, black man, 
Um, we're going to play Sherelle's video just one more time because it's th this is what started the conversation. And we're going to bring Sherelle up because Sherelle be having her ear to the ground and she be she be enlightening me. So she's going to come up in a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and play the video again for those that have recently come in. And we're going to continue to have the conversation because we got a big problem that we got to fix. When a man leaves, you're you're in that situation by yourself. So they're already going into it with this man ain't going to stay around because men leave. That's what men do. They leave. When a man leaves, you're you're in that situation by yourself. So they're already going into it with this man ain't gonna stay around because men leave. That's what men do. They leave. Wow. So that's all that is so hard to hear. I do know that some men leave and some women leave and people do what they do, but I don't want anybody to have the the stigma on them of black men. That's all y'all do is leave because that's not that's not the case for so many of them. So we gotta fix that. Yeah, but everything. um and me and black men, let me say this real quick. Black men, when you are no longer in a relationship and she decides she does not want to be with you, every seed you planted in that relationship, you should have uh, You should have it. Uh, whether it's children, um, whether it's the home, whatever it is. If you, get, if you got two kids with her, those two kids should be with you. If she want to leave, let her go. But when you leave, you're not leaving here with anything uh, <laughs> that I've given you. I've given you these children. I've given you this home. Everything stays with me. And it works, fellas. And you need to know, inbox me. I'll help you get it. I promise you. But so, you okay. So, so black man, again, what can we do? Okay. So I don't know if we would ever have any, any, I don't know if we would ever have any luck trying to change the child support. Um mm -hmm laws but i guess we could add to them because to make it mandatory that everyone has a uh paternity test or dna test at birth um that would be, that would be very helpful i think that's something that's already in place in some states am i right about that yes okay and the second thing would be um but do you know did you know that some people you you don't have to um you know submit to that you could say no you could refuse a paternity test mm -hmm. Now, if you refuse it, does the dad still have to pay? Yes. <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all. It does. So you might as well take it to find out if it is or if it's not your child. So that's right. the best way to do that. It may not be yours. It might not be yours. That we said there was thirty percent that were negative, and I'm assuming those. That's that default thing. If you don't answer, then you're automatically the dad. Is that what it is? Yes. And, wow. And, and, and security boss, even good men out there, because a lot of. Uh, 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 we always paint on both sides, but even when it comes to the men, because we advocate for, I advocate for my guys, there are some good men out here that really are trying to get custody of their kids and put them in a better situation. And when you have, uh, you know, like myself, when I told my ex-wife, listen, I'm going to pay half of everything that you have. They travel in your car, I'll pay half the note, half the insurance, everything. Right, and, I remember. And said, mm -hmm. and that was not enough. And so she went to court and the judge gave her way less because I was out of state at the time. So they didn't have a record of what I was making in, in Texas, in Louisiana. So they gave her the very bone dry minimum. And I said, okay, well, that's what you got that, you know, they gave that to you. I'm not, I'm not going to scratch my arm out anymore to help you. Um, and so that was the end of that. And then after that, I said, you know what, my kids are not in a good situation. So right. it took a lot of money, a lot of patience, a lot of time, a lot of court, a lot of days off work. So, guys, when you jump in it to fight, you got to be ready to fight. You got to yeah. be ready. You know what, though? Um, we really do need to put something in place because there's too many men that really want to be good fathers that are not being able to walk this out. Because what, again, I may live in a good place, but the child and for it, child support enforcers that are here um, they're supposed to work for both parties. I understand that most of the time they're women that are probably a part of the same system and it may not look good or they may mm -hmm. be negative or they talk real condescending and what have you. And you might have to get a lawyer, but they were supposed to be there to work as an advocate for the child, you know, cause that's what it's about. So what, what is it that I, I understand you're saying, well, let me ask you this question this way. Do you think if we go back and say to the father that, or to the mother, or to the system, this husband, this man doesn't want this child, and this woman refuses to delete it. Um, but they're equally responsible. Let's just forget it. 
and the father won't be responsible. So who takes care of that child at that time? Just the system would do it. Would that take care of the problem in the child support system? Would that take care of the issue? Well, he would have to forfeit all his rights to the child. Right. But if he does that mm -hmm. because he didn't want the child, but the woman decided that she did want the child, are we still going to have the system for her to, um, you know, are we still going to section A, AFDC or whatever you call it? As um, long as she has a child. Yes. Now, how does that take care of the problem? As long as she has a child, he could sign away all the rights. Matter of fact, okay. if he signed away all his rights, let's make it better for her. She's going to get more. So let me ask you a question. That is, is that something that the mother has to initiate? He just can't do that automatically? No, everything has to go through her. So she has to be the one that says, um, I want you to sign your rights away in order for you, you know, because I don't want to have anything to do with you. It, it's up yeah. to her. Yes. Just okay. like, um, yeah, just like anything else. Uh, sign okay. away, going to court, all this stuff. Yeah. I mean. Um, did I read this one? Um, the real problem is that mothers get automatic custody. Yes, I did. Thank you, AL. Um, hey, Sherelle. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? What's up, Good? my Louisiana chicka? Yeah, you're looking beautiful as normal. Thank you. Thank you. So, Sherelle, we've been using your video because we, we're trying to figure out, we're trying to help everybody, first of all. But before we go into that, let me read this super chat for we lose them like the other day. Um, thank you so much, Hunt Inc., for your $4.99 super chat. says, unfortunately, women today are running up on men, fighting hand to hand. What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What? He ain't lying. That don't he seem like a fair fight. But anyway. Ah, doggy. Oh, some of these women are whooping these men. Oh, stop it. Oh, whooping my goodness. Them, whooping them. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> let, let me read this other super chat. CC, thank you so much for your $4.99 super chat. How do the young women who want to be wives compete against a cloud disorder? You know what? I'm trying to. Huh? <laughs> She's talking about the asclotomus. It's catching oh, on. yeah, the disorder. Yes. <laughs> we're trying to figure it out. Actually, you know what, CC? We're trying to figure out how we can set these women that want to be wives aside. And not have to deal, you know, because right now we kind of grouping them all in together because we're not realizing who's who. It is we just don't know. But I'm I'm like, listen, ladies, the ones who want to be wives, we got to figure out a different and better way. So what can we do? Also, the system far as child support goes, how can we rectify the system in a way that it works like it was supposed to and 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 take care of the child and not this because you know that's very disparaging to a man. You know, mm -hmm. men work hard to be who they are, you know, making money or whatever it is. They work really hard. And if for somebody to come up now, listen, I didn't tell you the whole story, but for somebody to come up to this man and say, you got to pay fourteen ninety two for one child. But your total child support um, order would be thirty eight hundred dollars because remember, he had two others. He had two others on child support, too. I can imagine that man in despair because it's like, how can I pay nearly four thousand dollars in child support? I know he did it. I know they're his kids. I get it. And he got eight others. I understand. I get it. But that doesn't, uh, he's broken. He would be broken financially, probably, and just mentally broken because that's a lot of money. It's and a lot of money. She don't even need it. Most of that money's for her. <sighs> anyway, let's read this super chat and then we're going to talk to Miss Sherelle. Um, hey, yo, thank you again for your five dollars super chat. Say, women say men don't fight for the kids. Can you review? Can you review when TLA was talking to a Russian about child support, child custody? Women you talking say about men don't fight for kids. <laughs> I'm a little right. Yeah, you are. But I, <laughs> I think he's saying like the majority because because you got Sherelle right here who who knows and has heard that men. I want Sherelle to say because Sherelle says it really, really good. That's why I'm using her voice. Sherelle, go ahead and tell us what you know, girl. Tell us what you know. What men do? <laughs> they leave. <laughs> They leave. Tell us, tell, tell me, tell everybody else um, why you say that. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to necessarily say it's a divorce thing, but I just, from growing up, from what I see, it's not normal for men to be in a home. When a, when a woman is unhappy, she can be miserable. And you can watch a woman be miserable and stay in a marriage. I've seen women be in relationships where they get cheated on, they get abused, everything, and they'll stay into it. They'll just stay there and just take it. But like if when it's when the roles is reversed, I just don't see men sticking around 
dealing with whatever they don't like. They'll leave. They'll go create another family. And that's the saying, right? Like, if, if a woman is giving you a hard time with your kid, you, you it still work. As long as you still work, you can go make another baby, try to make that work, make another baby, try to make that work. They'll just go and find their happiness. I don't see them just sticking around thinking, oh, I'm about to be with this woman that I don't want to be with for some kids. Mm-hmm. And, then I, and, and a lot of times, because a lot of times what you see, and I see a lot of it happen with my friends growing up, is that, like, even if the kids aren't his, if that man finds a woman and she has kids, he'll treat those kids that he lived with. Those kids that he lived with, those kids will get treated. They'll get the best father, even if it's, it's stepkids. But just men sticking around through unhappiness, I've never seen that happen. <laughs> never. They just, you know, they like they go. And I guess a lot of people be having kids young. And I really don't be thinking that men be wanting to be, like, tied up young. But people just want to have sex. So they kind of just, you know, move So, Sherelle, would you say you ever met a good man? hmm You would say that? Did, well, did he have kids? Yeah. And did he stay with his um, baby's mother or in a relationship? Nope. He didn't? He didn't go Okay, so what? <laughs> okay, okay. Now that that some, that's special girls, right there. So even, even the, the good ones leave. Too. So what makes the a good? So too. what would make a man good if he? So when you say I mean, leave, you I just saying that. that mm hmm. Like, some are you? Of them, what makes you good is that even if you're not there in the home, you still take care of your kids. See what I'm saying? Those are the ones. Okay, that's what I'm trying to. Yeah. Because he still take care of his kids, even though he's not with a woman. But we all know what's best fit for the children is having both parents in the home together. But a man is just like, nah, okay, I'll take care of my kids over here. And I feel like that's a good one. But then I know other men who, like, they they only love the kids attached to the woman that they with. So if I'm with this woman, then I'm raising these kids. But if I'm not with this woman, okay. I think I that's how saying. it should be. That's how it should be. Because they keep the nuclear family together. It keeps the man and the woman and the children together. That's how it should be. A man should feel some type of way when he's disconnected from the woman that buried his children. He, he should feel some type of disconnection, some type of abandonment, because he's no longer with that woman. Dearly beloved. So what So what should happen, though? She's they saying should, that they, he's... They should, get, they should stay together. They should be married. They should be married. And, and and people, we, we get the concept in our mind that marriage is supposed to be this lovely, beautiful, rainbow Disney movie. And that's what it is. A lot of women think that marriage is Disney movie. No, marriage is, is trials, Works. tribulations. Yeah. It's going to be hell. It's going to be times where you're broke as a joke and ain't got no money. And that man don't need to be criticized and neither do you. Right? There are going to be times when you're not the woman that you're supposed to be. There's going to be times when he's not the man he's supposed to be. There's times when a man may have a wondering eye. Maybe a time where a woman is sick and almost about to die. Like you go through these things. And, and when we go through the marriage vows, so many of us are imposters. We have marriages so the family can say, girl, you're dressed pretty. But when it comes down to the contractual agreement that says, I'm going to love you broke. I'm going to love you when you're sick. I'm going to love you uh, uh, sickness, health, through good times, bad times. The vows cover every part of your life that you could go that you may experience in marriage. And we get up there and we commit to each other and we take the vow to love each other, regardless of all those things. And three years in, he loses his job, you want to be out. He says something you don't like, you want to be out. I'm not happy no more. I'm uncomfortable. I can't do this. I'm not happy. My friends are having fun. I'm not. I'm tired of these kids. I don't want to be with this man no more. Look at that other fine man over there. I want to go on a girl's trip for 28 days. And, it, and all these different stuff. No, if you're married, you have a responsibility to that man. And a lot of women are complaining about the very thing they took a vow to do. That's 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 just, it's, it's crazy. It's so contradictory. No, I, I honestly think that, um, I don't it's think that women be wanting to be married. I think they just want a wedding. I do think it's like a, a very fairy tale princess and Disney controls a lot. Like people be missing it, but Disney controls a lot, right? Like you as this damsel in distress and this man is supposed to come save you, but he's supposed to be Prince Charming. He's supposed to be perfect and he's supposed to be rich and he's supposed to elevate your life. And that's unrealistic. But exactly, a lot of that goes into it. Just like now when we hear a lot of people Thank saying, you, no, I don't need a man or I don't want a man, but 
If y'all noticed the last few popular Disney princesses, they had no prince to save them. It was a little girl, her name was Moana, and with the help of God, she saved her entire village, a little girl by herself. She's the princess. Then the next princess is another little girl saving her entire family alone. And the strongest character in Encanto is a female who is the strongest person in the village. So, so that goes back, like, back to the survival thing. If we've survived one day without the man, then now we don't need him. Yeah. Influ yeah. Influ and the influence Influ is horrible because women every day, this is what women are doing. Watching the TikToks. Five reasons why you should get out of your marriage when your husband piss you off. Number one, leave him if he get mad at you. Number two, if he leave his pants on the floor. Number three, if he come home 30 minutes after his job over. Number four, and the women are just sitting there just sucking it in. Then they put the phone down there. My phone did. Housewives of, uh, uh, Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, love and hip hop. Right? Everything is so negative, and the women are just consuming it. Today yes. I was at work, a girl was watching it on her desk, and I seen a big old, big old pair of breasts on the screen. I said, What are you watching? She said, Oh, I'm catching up on love and hip hop. Right? So it's so negative and so influential on women that women start taking these roles. All these women, you remember when uh what's the girl's name? Uh that had the fan on uh on Housewives of Atlanta. What's her name? Had the fan. Um Fake, um, she won Miss America. Yeah, uh, she won Miss America. Yeah, every five minutes she doing this. Kendra or something yeah, every five minutes she doing this. Oh, and goddamn! A month later, women get <laughs> married to their husbands. They had to fail. Oh yeah, she winning. She winning. So she listen, winning. so listen, Black Man. Let's let's listen because we got Sherelle here. This is a good question for her. So Sherelle, we understand the issue. We understand the the problem and what the the mindset is maybe right now, but what can we do? How can we change this? Because our next generation, our generations and our kids are suffering. They're, they're going to come out without the mother and the father in the household or even with the husbands, even having a relationship with the children. So that's going to be turning out more kids that are, you know, that are not productive. You can have young men that are not interested in doing sports. They're not interested in going to school. You're going to have young ladies that think that it's normal to have kids without a man. I think that's normal to raise kids without a man. You know, the norm, just because their mother did it, their grandmother did it, it's going to be a normal. And we all know that it's not normal. I mean, that may be what we choose to do. And we have that choice to make. But it, if, whenever you attest for right and wrong is how it affects someone else. If, if you got a child and it's ruining their life because they don't have a relationship with their dad, you got to check yourself and say, well, you know what? Maybe I made the wrong move you know, whether he wanted to be with me or not. So that's always a meter to what's right and wrong. I know some people say, you know, we don't know because we've been operating in, you know, dysfunction or whatever we're doing for so long. We don't really know what's right and what's wrong. We don't know, or even we don't even think about it. I get it. So even if we don't think about it, how do we, honestly, in your thoughts, how do we correct this problem? Because we got a child support system that is now saying if a man owes more than $10,000, he is now a felon and he's a criminal and he may not have, you know, that is not what we see as a criminal, right? So mm -hmm. now he's out, he's going to jail. Mm -hmm. So he's no longer in the lineup. He, he no longer can be a, a service to his child. So then we got other men who choose to have alternative lifestyles. Okay. So they're no, they're not available to us anymore. So then it, it brings it down to just a little bit of men and a little bit of women who may be willing to do this thing to continue on the generations. So how, how can we get other women to see where we've kind of gotten off and maybe try to turn the thing around? What can yeah, we say or what can we do? Well, I think there's a Bolo just said it. I don't know why. If, if we spiritually connected or something tonight. Oh, Lord, like, y'all spiritually connected? She said something. <laughs> Bolo is <laughs> But, but uh, listen, hold on, black man. I want Sherelle. I want Sherelle. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget what you're getting ready to say, though. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so I feel like society should know that the onus is always going to be on men, as much as we want to say that it's like you know the the community is run by women, which the black community probably is run by women. And so in America, the bigger society, which is why kind of a lot of times we when we get all caught up in a race, we feel like we're you know we're small. So on a bigger scale. They don't just make these laws for black fathers. Us. They make these You're laws right. for all fathers. Everybody. So they True. they're feeling like if if we 
if we put these responsibilities and we put, okay, so it's the reason why three strikes you're out because that that thought to pe put people in the mind that, oh, if you, you're you not going to sell drugs anymore, if you can think your whole entire life is going to go away, right? So we make harsh consequences so that you can change your behavior. But a lot of people, they're just not scared because if I hear the first story, I see the horror stories of single motherhood and that was enough for me to be like, okay, Ain't, ain't for me, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that was enough for me. But some people, you got to make them a believer. Some people, you can tell the stove is hot, don't touch it. Some people need to get burnt a few times. So, what I think is that people are going to have to start having kids later on in life. And I think that with, with the millennials, we're having a baby bus. So, a lot of us aren't like quick to jump because I feel like there's going to be. It's going to have to be a situation to where the younger generation is going to have to break away from the people that is around them, right? And they're going to have to unlearn all of they've been taught, right? All of this, oh, you don't need a man, all of this. Because if you look at the circumstances of sin, I do not want to be a single mother. I do not want to be miserable. I do not want to, I do not want to, like, I always tell them, like, you have kids for men who don't even respect you. You know how crazy that is? For you to put yourself in a situation to where you could actually lose your life giving life to a child for a man who doesn't even respect you. Like, you don't want to put yourself in that situation. And I know you've seen your sisters do it and your aunties do it and your grandma and them and all of them was doing it. But those type of women are going to have to be able to separate themselves, find more positive influences, and then move move on from there. But it's not like you're going to come out 18 with this. With all you've seen as single mothers at 18, don't have a baby. Because you're not going to know how to select a man right now. You're not going to understand that. And even then, these young men, like these 18-year-old, 19-year-old boys are not ready to commit for the rest of their life. So I think that because it's no longer like back in the day, people used to build you to be a mother. This is this is school. You don't need a school. School was life. Your grandma was teaching you how to do this, how to do that, how to do this. You respected all the men around you. That was your submission. You submitted to your grandpa. You submitted to your daddy. So submitted, submission was just a part of life. You was already conditioned to be a wife. So when women was getting married at 15, we're already the understanding that this is how I do it. But that's not the case anymore. So I think that women are going to have to put a pause on love, put a pause on this until they can really understand what is marriage? What is the duty of marriage? What is the commitment before I jump into it? Because a child is a whole human being that you have to put up into the world. And you could either raise the president or you could raise the mass shooter. So, you know what I'm saying? So you might want to, or the, 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 the ganger. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just a big deal. And I think that people need to be taught the importance of family, taught the importance of it and see more positive influences. And that's why I feel like security boss, I respect you because you're just pushing back because it's a lot of us that see nothing but negative. So it's like, you get the fight to say, no, this marriage is beautiful. Family is beautiful. I'm an example of that. And with, with my guidance, with my help, which to help you understand it, it could be a beautiful thing because trust me, on the opposite, like I said, they got Disney princesses who don't have princes anymore. The women are saving the world on their own. The songs, the, the media. So this y'all fighting back is needed because it's so much going against you. It's a it's a giant. But you know what, Sherelle? Um, I appreciate you so much for wanting something different and being able to articulate that because to me, you're fighting back too. Um you know, I'm removed from it because I'm an older woman, but I do want to be that example. But I really don't know because you still have people fighting me. You have women fighting me to be single. And you, you're fighting me to be single. And I'm saying to you ladies, listen, that doesn't make sense. Because even though this is not a perfect world and maybe you haven't come across a perfect man or even a good man, there is somebody out there for you. But you have to align yourself in order to receive that. You can't you can't. A man can't think that you're against him and he'd be good to you. Dearly so beloved. we're doing the same things. And if 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 all you've seen is negativity and that's what you grew up in and this is your normal to have men leave or whatever, I'm telling you that that's not the case. But does something catastrophic have to happen in order for you to, to see it? I mean, are we not in a time right now where it's just not looking good for a single black woman?
you know, I'm not talking about things. I'm not talking about stuff. I'm not talking about high paying jobs. I'm talking about your life, your well-being. Um, like we're saying all the time, men are not covering you or men are not protecting you. They're not. They're not going to. I mean, if every time I say hello to a woman, she cuts my head off. If I'm, I'm just giving examples about how I'm being married. I'm trying to put my good and my bad out there. I was a single mom, not for long, but I'm sharing with you. I was there. I understand. I did not hate a man, but I was there. And I'm sharing with you how I turned my life around, how I was account, accountable for it and how things happened. I'm sharing it. I can't do no better than that. So listen, let me read this comment from no, no. She says, um, Oh, no, no, I don't know if no, no, is no, no, a woman. Yes. She says she doesn't understand that, understand they are not fighting her. It's the supply. You really think women want to be single. Listen, I don't think women want to be single, but when we try to have those, and if you're talking about me, I don't know if you talk about me or Sherelle, but when we're having those conversations, when I'm having conversations with a woman, when a woman, they're definitely telling me that they don't need a man. They don't need a man. Now, I do know that that's a joke, but I can understand that what they want is a good man or a good companionship in a man. I know that. But I got to break. I got to figure out how I can get in. You know, I got to get back to the beliefs and what your foundation is in order to show you that there are good men out there. But if I'm totally just fighting with you for my examples, you fight me for my examples. That's crazy to me. You know, and then just to say, always pointing out the negatives, our men, men in general, they, they have authority. They're kings. If you inspire them, if you support them, if you're in your position, they will be that. I promise y'all they'll be that. I mean, I get that we're seeing some that leave, but those are men that were never there, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Okay, so I can say this because I was just, I was having this, this conversation. Nobody wants to be with the ops, right? So a lot of people have gotten into relationships and they've done and played their part. A lot of women have played their parts and it was with the ops. That's why I don't like, I feel like when you're young, just don't date. Cause it's so, when you're young and this is your first time dating as a woman, you're so impressionable. And what they like to call us is green or naive or whatever. Cause this is your first experience with men. And these men at this point in your life, at, at your young age, these men can basically tell you jump off a cliff and you'll jump off the cliff, right? Absolutely. That's, I agree with that. They're running into it. And these men, even though it may be for a small amount of time when they're young, are causing a lifetime of damage. So when I hear a woman say, I'm good by myself, I'm single, I want to be single, I don't need a man. I don't think she's saying that she doesn't need the positive things that could come with a good man. But what I'm sure she's saying is, I don't need an STD. I don't need the embarrassment. I don't need emotional abuse. I don't need physical abuse. I don't need outside children. I don't need a man that's going to get me pregnant and leave me. I don't need all these negative consequences I've seen other women go through at the hands of men. I don't need that. And that, that all is very true. And some of those stories are very real. And we probably got a million different scenarios. But guess what? Guess what we're doing wrong, Sherelle? For whatever reasons, we don't have value. We don't see ourselves as much. Because everything you just mentioned, we played a part in. That man that I slept with before I got married, I slept with him. He didn't take it. Him and I was together. I enjoyed it just like he enjoyed it. A baby was produced. He wasn't doing anything to me that I didn't want to happen. And for whatever reason, we don't want to take accountability for the part that we play in the men that we play with. But I do agree with you that we put a whole lot of stake in men. We think that they're great, but they have no idea that we even think that way when we're younger. That is so true. So we do put all into it. I agree with you. But there comes a time when we got to get our own value together. We got to get our own value together and say, you know what? I did this. Because if not, Sherelle, we're going to continue to do the same thing over. How many women you know have dated the same man five times? Not the same man, but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, this first one was a cheater. The second was a cheater. You know what I'm saying? Because we now, never said. I, Go ahead. I definitely understand that. But what, what I'm saying is, I just don't, just don't think they, they understand how to pick them. That's why I said they're going to have to unlearn what they know, move around and just find some more positive uh, p influence. This and then really learn what they should be looking for in a man, right? Because we're thinking that as long as we love and treat somebody right, and we learn this through men, friends, but we talk about relationships, right? As long as I love this man, give him my all and treat him right, I'm 
he's going to love me and give me his all, treat me right. And that's not the case, right? So I think we learned that. So I think one thing that women need to do is, like, we don't fall in love with who a man is. We fall in love with how he makes us feel. And then sometimes we tell a man exactly how we want to feel, and then he gets to play this role, right? So it's like sometimes we just need to see. If I want to look at a man, if I see he's a good man, who is he to his family? Who is he to his community? Does Is he consistent? It's not about how much money he make. Can he keep a job? Does he take care of himself? Can he manage money? Is he financially literate? Look at his life and who he is to say, this is a good man. Not how he makes you feel. Because we get caught up in these butterflies and this, oh, he, he think I'm pretty and he makes me feel good. And we fall in love with that. The idea of this man making us feel good, not who he actually is. So now you're in love with a man who makes you feel good, but he's a piece of shit. But that's because we have never set a standard for our life. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But guess what? I'm still playing in that. He's a piece of shit and I'm still playing with him because I didn't set a standard. If I saw him drop below that standard, I should have cut him off before I even gave him myself, gave myself to him. <laughs> so hold on. They wasn't even paying that. attention to the standard. Because women, we 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 are not holding up our value. We're not setting a standard. Standard. There are no examples that are being set. We just going along with the program, but it's time out for that. We got to be accountable for what we do, so we won't do the same things over. And we don't do that. We are blaming on the man every time. But hold on, hold your thought, black man. I need you to come on in here. Are you ready? I'm ready. I want you to answer this question, and then I want you to respond to Miss Sherelle. Go ahead. Can you answer that question for me? How do you take accountability for men who are unaccountable? They are still convinced women get pregnant from storks. Um, Gia, men get women pregnant. We all know that. So let's be realistic. Um, my thing is this. We both can't be ignorant. All right. Men cannot go get a woman pregnant and not take every responsibility. However, Women cannot throw all the responsibility on their man. You can't throw it back. <laughs> Let me say this in the, in the best way I can. I'm going to do some little poetry. You can't throw it back and then get mad when he don't know how to act. You should have learned how he acted first before you threw it back. It's all about Thank you, Mr. Boss. Uh, that, was a, that was a real good one. I like that. Uh, so because most women, that's what they do. They're emotional. Give me that penis. I want it now. And when you get that penis, and, a, and two or three weeks later, after you got that penis, he started acting funny. You can be like, why are you acting like that? You ain't never... You don't know how he acts because the first thing that he got from you is vagina. Um, but, Sherelle, I agree with you on some of the things that you said, honey. Let me tell you what parts I agree with. I agree with when you said that uh, you and security boss, that there are no more examples. There are no more examples. Women are not being examples to their children. And I call it OHA. Oh, yeah. Here go another one, security boss. OHA. <laughs> O-H-A. OHA. The old ho association. Where these older women that didn't have men, that didn't have a husband, that didn't have uh, an example of their own, they teach their daughters the same lifestyle to be just like mama. And one of the things that, that irks my nerves is that we'll sit here and men ain't this and men ain't that and men don't take responsibility and men out here getting these women pregnant and men are horrible. But for men and women, nobody hold mama accountable. And mama is responsible for a whole lot of trauma in the boys and the girls. I heard, I seen an episode of Ayala. She said mothers break their sons. And so, but, but you heard Tupac. Tupac said, even though you are cr a crack fiend mama, you always was a black queen mama. No, your mama wasn't a queen. She was a crackhead. But if that was your daddy, you would have said he's a crackhead dude. That's a crackhead nigga right there. But your mama, a queen, she's a crackhead. She's on the street, cracked out. She's still a queen. She's beautiful. She does no wrong. We need to, we need to go back to, you always know I got to go to the word. Biblically, in Titus, it says this. Likewise, teach older women to be reverent <laughs> in the way that they live. Not to be slanderous or addicted to wine. Don't be drunk. Jesus. I mean, now you're laid out. They can urge the younger women, let me slide this over, uh, to love their husbands and their children, to have self-control, be pure, to be busy at home, to be kind to their husbands, to be subject to their own husbands. So they will uh so they would align with their husbands and with God. That's biblical. 
The Bible says that. So I think that when we're out of line, I think that when we're out here, women are getting pregnant and men are getting them pregnant and we're not married. The reason that the world is in chaos and you saying, like you said, Sherelle, men are leaving is because the men are leaving because they have nothing that they're attached to. They got, they came to what, for what they wanted. And that's why women should see red flags. You should know when a man just want to be sexually active with you. You, you know, you, 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 you should know that, but guess what happens? You get a little moist and oh my God, girl, I gotta have them. And you don't know nothing about them. And then he bang you up and then it's the world fault. Girl, he ain't, I can't believe he did me like this. Oh, right. And then even with the men, same thing. Man, it go crazy as hell. Well, sir, in the beginning when she cussed that waitress out, you knew that she had that side to her, but you, you wanted those thighs and those hips. And you want to get in the bed and let it dip. And now both of you are stuck with each other with a baby, 18 years. So my thing is this. I agree with you guys. Uh, my solution to this whole thing would be men just have self-control. Don't be out here just, don't be out here giving the meat to everybody. Just have self-control. Women, take care of yourselves. Love yourselves more. Get around women. Get look. But in your city, find a group of women that are on the same page you're on or where you're trying to be. Find a, find a group of security bosses and just sit around, just talk to them and let them talk to you about their life experiences and the things that they've dealt with and the outcomes of those things and learn from those women, grow with those women, walk with those women, call them. Hey, security boss, listen, I met this guy and I'm thinking about going over and having sex with him tonight. And that, secure, and, and that lady in your group should be like, baby, I know how you feel. I've been there. However, you don't know this man yet. This man is not serious about being in a relationship with you yet. I think you're putting yourself in a bad situation. You, we should have circles like this for men and for women. But we don't do that. We don't have those examples anymore. Right? Granddad and big mama and them, they didn't die off. Now we left with the old hoes and the old pimps. And they promote nothing but bad behavior. And everybody's following them. That's all I got. So um, before we get out of here and I tell you what I think we need, and Sherelle, I appreciate you so much. I want to um, read this super chat. It's from Mr. Milner. How are you doing today? The behavior and actions of women, of black women, say that they want what they want. It's contrary to what the good black men are looking for in a future wife. They choose what they want and desire as opposed to the need. You know what? Um, thank you so much for your ten dollars super chat. But I want to say this because I what I've what I heard the problem is and what we need to do. Hey, Fatty, how are you? Fatty, what's going um, on? What I heard is that our value, our value system is gone, and the way we value and see ourselves is is seeping away. Now we're gonna have to figure out how we can put value back in to who we are or how we find value in ourselves. I have no idea how to do that, y'all. Um, I can say set standards all day, every day. And people may be like, you know, you think you this, you think you that. I don't know. Yeah, I do. Um, Cause I'm not going to just let everything happen, you know, but I'm telling women to set standards. Don't preserve yourself, preserve yourself. Don't just be a part of everything that's going on. Don't, you know, I, I'm learning a lot over there on the cruise season, y'all <laughs> on the cruise season. Women are, are they're participating in oral and, uh, guac walking and doing uh, tossing salads and all this. And these men ain't promised them marriage at all. And I feel like they're doing this in competition just to say, you know, I want this man and to let that man know I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But come on y'all. I'm like, you can't preserve anything for your husband. We got to do better. So and yeah, we got security some boss. All this stuff is recorded for you to view it. So if I'm dating this woman, <laughs> I can go back and watch. But you know what, Skip Boss? I saw, I think it's the same one you saw. Was it one with, or are you talking about the one with Angela Yee? Uh-huh. Oh, what, what, the, 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 the Young Miami interview with Angela Yee from Breakfast Club? Oh, I don't know. I'm just, no, I'm telling you what happened. On I told you I'm learning a lot from cruise season. Cruise right, season's right, right, right. here. Thank you so much for your nine dollar nine nine Super J says, Black Man Unfiltered up here preaches. Salute to SV and Sherelle. Love the chat. No, I'm saying they're teaching me on, on cruise season. I'm learning that women mm -hmm. are that liberated sexually. And I'm telling them, hey, stop. Right, right. And, and but are you saying that there was a, vid a video with Young Miami and 
Angela yeah, Yee. I think it was Young Miami, or because uh, Sheree, you may correct me. When they were sitting around with Angela Yee from Breakfast Club, and they were sitting around the circle and they were talking about oral sex, and she said, "Oh, girl, you know I like to swallow," and she said, "Oh, we all do that, girl. We all do that, and none are married, girl. We all do that with our men. Oh, yeah, we do that." And then she was like, uh-uh, I'm a freak freak. She said, girl, you can't get no freak in that. She said, yes, it is. She said, I'll have sex with my man. And when it's time for him to get... Uh-uh. <laughs> Black man, we had to let you go now. <laughs> but we know where you're going with it. But the point I'm trying to make is this. We have to figure out how we can get... <laughs> Mr. Boss Gadget, right? Uh, listen. We got to we got to figure out how we can bring value back to the woman. These these are some beautiful young ladies that need to be wives. And again, they don't have uh, from what Sherelle is saying. There are no examples out there. And what you're saying too, black man. And I agree with that. But again, I'm going to try to be the best example. And it doesn't mean that we have to hate each other, though. You know, we still don't have to hate each other. Black women don't have to hate black men. And we do need them. You know, we we, we established that black men and women need each other. Men and women need each other, period. So we don't have to pretend anymore that, you know, we need to reject you all to make you feel bad or to hurt you. No more rejection. We need each other and we need to make that our basis and move up from there and stop all this extra stuff. I mean, really. So, y'all, it is about time for us to go now. I got some announcements I'm going to but I want y'all to end or say whatever you have to say, because this is not done. We're going to continue to talk about this because I appreciate Sherelle so much. Sugar Bomb, Sherelle, Q, because y'all understand, y'all are at that age and y'all know what the women or the young girls are thinking and saying and maybe why. So I can like help and, you know, fight back against that, like you said. But if I don't know, I don't know. So Black man, what you got? Well, I just want to say, uh, Security Boss, this was a great conversation. Um, I think that we should uh, keep moving forward. But I think that we can't be ignorant in our moving. I think that we should, uh, men should understand uh, you should have some self-control. Uh, sex is not everything. Um, and then when you're younger, you feel like if you don't have sex, you're damn near dead. Uh, but it's not everything. I think that waiting uh, to have sex, and I know this is going to be hard, uh, like Security Ball said, but waiting to have sex is the best thing to do, man, especially in this temp the, the world that we're living in today. It is so easy to get trapped. It is so easy to get put in a situation where you got a kid. It's so easy to be put into the system. I'm telling you about this, man. You know, when you drive on a tollway, they they take a picture of your license plate and send you a bill. But mm -hmm. you don't have to go on the toll. You could drive on the regular road and they won't even know who you are. And I think that a lot of men are going through tolls and they're just getting their picture taken, getting in that system, getting in that system. All of you, getting in that system. They, they, you, you, so you, you, you're on child support. You got a felony. You're getting felony jail time. You're going to jail for 30 days for non-payment of child support. You, you you're just losing. You're taking the L. Why would you want to? Have, why would you want someone to have that much control over you? Hmm. That's all she has. Like Security Boss said earlier, she has your life in her hands, and she's just filling your ass around and saying, "Listen, you know what? I'm tired. Uh, I, I'm tired. I don't want to be. With, uh, you know what? I'm going to put you on child support. And then when I get angry." I'm going to go back to the course and tell them I want to increase. Mm. Now, you, oh, you think you stand with your mama now? Watch this. Oh, wow. Black like, man, I hope it ain't like that, but I'm beginning to think that some cases may be. Sherelle, right. what do you got? Okay, so I'm going to say to women, stop having sex, okay? Because I know what Black Man and Filter was talking about with that viral video. And from what I be hearing, if if it gets to the point where a man has to berate you, degrade you, spit on mm. you, pee on you, for him to be able to get off, you're going too far. Come back. Right. Come back. Yeah, she said, Come back, people. Y'all had so much sex that y'all can't even have regular sex. Mm -hmm. It's like, is that it's Disney? too much. Is that Disney? Is that Disney? Yeah. I don't think that's <laughs> like that is Disney gone wrong. Y'all wilding. Y'all wilding. <laughs> wow. Unlearn, wow. relearn, open your mind, learn new things, plan your kids, and look for a man. When you're looking for a man, you're interested in a man, go for who he is, not how he treats you. Because even if it's the bad day, if you don't work out with a good man, at the end of the day, he'll still be a good man. 
No man, all men are gonna treat you special because they want your box. They all gonna lie. They all got roses. They all got looks, man. They all gonna take you on three hundred dollar dates. That's not gonna happen for the next twenty five years of your life. Okay, it's not. So don't get so caught up in the butterfly stage. Really learn who this man is and see what his plan is and see if you can get behind that plan. Because yeah. nine times out of ten, he's not gonna let his plan up for you. So you got to make sure that he have a plan that you can follow. So uh, stop having sex. Like, y'all y'all getting STDs. Y'all need to stop. It's so sad when you stop. say things like that. But, you know, I don't know how many examples of bad behavior we need in order for us to change who we are. I have no idea. But I want to say a couple things and then we're going to get out of here. But before I go, AL, thank you so much for your $5 super chat. He says, how marriage does how marriage does prevent any of this. If you get divorced, it's going to happen anyway, and you got to pay lawyers to do it. Well, let me say this, AL. If you're sincere about being married, you do everything else you want to do. If you open a business, you make sure you put into that business what it is you want that business to do. If you want that business to make money, and this is the same for a woman. Um, you give a woman money, they will multiply it. If, whatever, we, we're, we're receivers. So if you pour into us, we're going to double what you're pouring in. If you treat us good, we're going to treat you doubly better. That, that doubly better. <laughs> That's a terrible thing. <laughs> they go, we're going to treat you better. So whatever you pour into us, we're going to make it work, AL. It's just the point of making, it's the point where you got to decide, are you going to pour in? Are you going to be thinking about divorce? If you have divorce on your mind, don't get married. It's not for you. And it's okay. You can be a single man. If you're a single man with kids, make sure you're taking care of your kids. Marriage is not for everyone. I hate to say that, but it's not. But I would want to see more women married and and then and less uncovered, I should say it that way. Uh, but if it's not for you, AL, don't worry about it. I'm just telling you, your marriage can be awesome and you don't have to worry about divorce. I don't think about divorce with Mr. Boss. I've been here 27 years. I'm not going anywhere. What value or what 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 could I do on the outside? What am I getting yeah, away from? It. What are we doing? He getting on my nerves. Okay, he gonna get on my nerves within this marriage. I mean, I want to pay bills by myself. Why? You know, what What am I doing? I'm finding another man that's going to have another issue. All of y'all are the same. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> People are the same. We're going to always find an issue with somebody. Nobody's perfect. I've adjusted and I've adapted to what I have. So I'm good. That's what marriage is about. But I want to tell y'all this. Conflict resolution is this Saturday again. It's going to be at 3 p.m. Sherelle is going to be there. Trigger Mike, Trill, Aaron O, Hank. The only person that is not going to be able to come as of right now is Q. But hopefully we have somebody that has her same point of view. But we're all going to be there, right? So y'all need to be here with us. And we're going to continue with this conflict resolution situation. We're going to have some solutions. I mean... We already um we already said that uh we're gonna have some solutions and we're gonna talk about value and working ourselves forward. We're gonna pick up where we were the other day, which is basically here. We're basically here. We're trying to figure out why we can't get together, you know. And if we are together, what do we need to do? And I see value being a very important part. But before we go, black man, you got a show tonight. No, not tonight. Okay, Sherelle, do you have something that you want to share? It's so um, oh, y'all can come to Fighter Complex channel. Uh, this, it, it should be starting in like an hour, and they're gonna be talking about uh, modern mothers and just how like mothers, young mothers are like. I guess there's about this uh, video with um, Erica Badu posted a food shot with her daughter. See what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, it's a couple of things I forgot. Tomorrow. Tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern, I will be on a panel with Chaz Charday. Also on Wednesday night, I will be at the cruise season at 1030. So y'all find me. I'm going to be somewhere. I'm busy this week, but I appreciate you all for being here. I love the conversation. I'm glad we're able to have a conversation because we've been fighting for like a year. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad we're able to have a conversation. Yes, I know a lot of people always feel like trust is a big thing. Like I can not trust this person with my heart, but if you're having sex with them, you're trusting them with your life. Okay, I agree. Things that they can do to end you. So 
Trusting, if you have, you have, if you trust, them enough, you trust them enough to have sex with them, you trust them enough to have your heart. And it's the oh, vice versa. If you don't trust them with your heart, you can't trust them with nothing else. Stop trusting them with your body. Days that we once spent the backseat. So, guys, um, make sure that everyone here now is subscribed to the channel. If you're new from TikTok. Make sure you go over to Black Man Unfiltered and you go to Sherelle, subscribe to their channels, also to Unsolicited Security Boss. I think I'm about seven away from, what Come number on. is that? You can get that so, now. I need y'all to go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. Also, make sure when you come into the live, which is over, you're giving me the thumbs up because we have 53 thumbs up, but we had a lot more people in here than that. So thank you guys for your participation, your engagement, and for being here. But again, tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm on Ch Chad Charday channel at 6, 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And on Wednesday, I'm over at cruise season at 1030. Y'all got to come. Y'all got to follow me. I need y'all support. Y'all know that. Thank you so much, everybody. And you guys, thank y'all. See you soon. Absolutely. See you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>